According to anthropologist Jack Witherford, traditional poems and songs have been used to communicate as far back as the era of Genghis Khan and the Mongol Empire. Sending written messages through the military was considered as a threat to security, so they had to find alternative ways of communicating over long distances such as from China all the way to Europe. And one way of doing this, according to some historians, is that they used to sing poems and songs in different tones, indicating movements through different areas. For example, singing song A in a specific manner, or in let's say tone A, would indicate movement through the mountains, whereas singing the same song in another tone or in tone B would indicate movement through the rivers. Let's see how we can use the same principles and strategies to memorize information in the 21st century. What's going on Sapiens? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Arham and I'm a third year medical student at the University of Oslo in Norway. Memory athletes use techniques like the method of loci and the PEG system to accomplish insane feats of memorization and recall, such as remembering the exact order of cards in a deck of cards under five minutes, or memorizing the maximum digits of pi uh, in the shortest possible time. Now these exact same techniques can be used in med school to memorize the insane amount of material that we have to go through every single day. In today's video, I will be talking about the PEG system where I will go through three things. Firstly, what exactly is the PEG system? Secondly, how can we create a PEG system? And thirdly, I will talk about how we can practically implement the system of PEGs in our med school life before ending the video with a summary and a conclusion. And since time is the most precious thing in the world, here are the timestamps of my video so you guys can skip through and watch exactly the parts that you want to watch. Now the PEG system is basically a method we can use to remember lists and the exact order of the items on that list. And this is based on the idea that we humans do not remember numbers as easily as we remember images or other conceptual material. The idea is that you are associating a number with a specific image or a noun, because in medical school there are times when we need to remember lists in their exact order, right? Such as the 12 cranial nerves. So if you find yourself struggling with that, then the PEG system would be a great tool. Now why is it called the PEG system? These PEGs are basically associations or connections which serve as PEGs or hooks where you can simply hang new information every single time that you want to learn. So you basically create a PEG system once, so it's like a one-time investment, and once that system is made, or once those hooks are ready, you can simply use those same hooks to hand to hang new information every single time you want to learn something. So it does require this one-time investment where you need to sit down and create the system of pegs or hooks as I like to call them. Uh, but once this is made, you can simply use the exact same system and apply this or use that as hooks to hang on any new material that you are trying to learn. So now let's have a look at how we can create this one-time system of pegs. Now there are different versions of the peg system and the one that I personally prefer is called the major system. Now this is a bit more complicated than the standard peg system which is based on rhymes and poems but once you have made this one it's absolutely going to be worth your investment. Now how do you create a peg major system? The principle behind the major peg system is that you are associating numbers with sounds. So the sound we associate with the number one would be a T, the T sound because T has one vertical line whereas the sound we associate with the number two would be an N because N has two vertical lines. The sound we associate with the number three would be an NM M sound because M has three spots where it touches the bass line. So three equals M or M. Whereas the letter four or the, the number four uh, is associated with the letter R because four ends with the R. So four means R or the R sound. Five is associated with the L sound or L sound uh, because in Roman numbers, uh, L means 50. So you associate L or the L sound with five. And then you have number six, which is now associated with the letter J or the J sound because supposedly J written backwards looks like a six. So yeah. The number seven is associated with the K sound or the K or a hard C as you may like to call it. So seven equals K. Whereas the number eight is linked with the letter F. So an F sound because uh, when you write the letter F in like handwriting, so handwritten Fs have two loops, uh, which eight also has. So they link eight with the sound uh, F or F. Whereas the number nine is associated with the letter P or P sound because back when you write P backwards, it looks like 
n or 9 I mean. So the idea is that you are associating all these numbers with a specific sound or specific uh, alphabet. Now please do not worry if you are confused right now because the first time I came across this I was pretty lost as well I was super confused. But let me give you guys a con concrete example on how we can implement the same peg system into learning let's say the 12 cranial nerves. 12 cranial nerves need to be memorized in their exact sequence and hence the peg system works perfectly fine for that. And to be very honest, I haven't really used this system um, for this exact purpose, but I still find it to be useful in other areas, which I will also be giving you guys an example of. So the first cranial nerve. Now, the number one is associated with the sound T. So T means like tea or drinking tea. And then you can simply imagine an old man drinking tea in a factory. So an old man drinking tea in a factory. So old olfactory, olfactory nerve. That's the first cranial nerve. Now the second cranial nerve. So the number two is linked with the sound N or N. And now let's associate the number N or the sound N with an image to remember the second cranial nerve. So N, N, which means two. So N can be linked with a nanny. Uh, or an old nanny who's sitting with these massive huge glasses. Uh, okay, so we have a nanny who's wearing huge glasses. So N means two and old glasses, glasses, optics. So the nerve, the optic nerve. And now the third cranial nerve. So the number three is linked with the sound M or M and M can be linked to, to the image motorcycle, right? So M motorcycle, and now let's imagine a biker riding a motorcycle and ha who has these huge binoculars and he's searching for land. So we have a biker who's riding a motorcycle, so M3, motor, okay, motor, binoculars, ocular. So oculomotor nerve is the third nerve because M means three. So third optical, third cranial nerve would be oculomotor nerve. Now I think you hopefully got the idea. Uh, and to be very honest, I do not really use the PEG system that often in my learning uh, because I do prefer using acronyms and the method of loci for memorization. But let me give you guys a quick example of how I used the PEG system recently. Now, when it comes to remembering the exact nervous segments of the sciatic nerve, especially L4, L5 and S1, I would, for some reason, always get confused because this is important information in orthopedics where we need to know which nervous segments supply which parts of your legs. Uh, in terms of like spinal stenosis and prolapse. Now L4 was quite easy to remember because L4 supplies four muscles like your quadriceps uh, but I would always mix up or get confused between S1 and L5. So this is how I used the PEG system to remember this exact piece of information. Now how do we spell the word heels like the heels of our feet? So H-E-E-L and the sound L or the letter L is linked with the number five. So L5 supplies your heels. So when you are basically walking on your heels, you are testing the nerve L5. Uh, and the exact opposite would be then S1 because that's the only option. So when you're walking on your toes, that would be L1. Bang, problem solved. So the main principle behind the peg system is that you are associating a number with a specific sound, a noun or an image. Making the peg system requires a one-time investment, which in my opinion is absolutely worth it. So you basically have these pegs which serve as hooks and on these hooks you basically hang on new information every time you want to learn something new. Now if you found this video interesting then you might also want to watch other videos where I talk about other memorization tools and techniques such as acronyms and also how we can take our exam performance or exam preparation to a whole new level. If you haven't subscribed already then please consider doing so. Take care guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.